perfect day. Perfect day. Yeah. Good news. Okay. Uh, yeah, beautiful day. Thank you. Uh, I'm Vito Fasella. I'll be uh, very uh, privileged to be joined by uh, some great uh, public officials representing the people of Staten Island. And today we get another bite at the apple. Um, at least we, we hope so. And what we've been saying for weeks, and now I think the world is paying attention, that uh, the location known as the St. John's Villa Migrant Shelter uh, is the worst possible location for a migrant shelter. And we stand here on behalf not only the people of Aracar and South Beach, uh, but also uh, the 500,000 people across Staten Island who want to urge uh, the court to do what everybody else has failed to do, and that is to right this ship, make things right for the people of Staten Island, make things right for the parents and the children of St. Joseph Hill Academy, uh, the parents and children of PS39, and frankly, anybody with an ounce of common sense who sees this uh, facility as the worst possible choice in the worst possible location. Uh, we know and we've been saying for a year the drumbeat has been continuous, uh, that the federal government has failed and abdicated its responsibility by allowing the borders to be wide open, allowing hundreds of thousands of people to flood across, and combined with the city's right to shelter policy that says come on into New York City, we'll put you up in a hotel, we'll feed you three meals a day, we'll give you whatever you want, now we're giving free mopeds apparently, e-bikes and everything else that comes with it. We said then, and unfortunately we were right, uh, it was a recipe for disaster, but with that said, uh, today is about hoping, hoping that at least one branch of government listens to the plea and the plight uh, of the people of Staten Island and shuts this thing down. That's what we're hoping for. Uh, we couldn't be in better hands with the uh, attorneys that are handling this case, and Lou Gelomino and Mark Fonte, and we are grateful for what they have done. And with that, I want to turn it over to Assemblyman Michael Tanousis. Thank you. Thank you uh, to our Chief Executive, Vito Fisella, for leading the fight here. Uh, we are here representing the residents of Aracar, the students of St. John Hill Academy, and the parents of St. John Hill Academy, as well as the rest of our constituents here on Staten Island. We are here to ask the judge, in this case, to do what the mayor and the governor have not. And that is hear us out, to hear our case as to why St. John Villa Academy is the worst possible location for a migrant shelter. We need to have accountability in this process, and we have not received any from the city of New York. We've said this multiple times, and I'll say it again. I am the son of immigrants. My parents came here for the American dream. They worked hard, and they achieved it. We are not anti-immigration, but we are anti-insanity. And having the border open, allowing anyone to come in without any type of vetting process, and then having laws in place in the city of New York to be able to house people, give them food, and give them all sorts of other accommodations as they flood in here by the thousands to the detriment of our communities is indeed insanity. So that's what we're here today to do. As a former prosecutor, I spent many a times in this courthouse seeking justice for the people of Staten Island. And I am once again here as an assemblyman asking the courts to seek justice and to do justice for the people of Staten Island. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And it's really delicious to watch how uh, the federal government that allows the borders to be open, that allows people to come here and spend about a hundred and cost about $140,000 a year, where the average household income in this country, by the way, has dropped to about $73,000 or so. It's delicious to watch the federal government criticize everybody here for ha mishandling the migrant crisis and not doing anything to help. With that, Senator uh, Andrew Lenz. Keep it on the Thank you, Borough President Fasella, to my colleagues here. You know, um, as a former prosecutor and attorney, it's, it, it's clear to a first-year law student uh, that this law is being perverted by the city administration and by Governor Hochul and being used against the people. Um, I, I love our history here in America, and the law in America derives its majesty by virtue of the fact that it is in place to ensure justice, fairness, equality, and freedom. And we have elected officials who, as the borough president said, who, are, who have decided not only to turn a deaf ear 
to the plight of the people. You know, this is no longer a Republican and a, or a Democrat issue. The majority of the people of the city of New York, if not the state, have spoken loud. And they have said this is wrong. And they want it to end. And they want their voices to be heard. And we have elected officials at the executive level, the governor, the president, who have decided for whatever reason not to listen to them. Nowhere is the majesty of the law in America more on display when it is called upon to prevent the government from trampling the voices of the people, from trampling freedom, and exercising an overreach and oppression. And that's why we are here together. In America, when you have a gripe with the government, you file your grievance with the court. And here on Staten Island, we trust, perhaps unlike in other areas around the city, we trust that our judges will obey their oath and will follow the Constitution, will honor the law, and will hear the people. Thank you, Senator. Uh, and the, uh, a wonderful lady who represents that area in Staten Island is State Senator Jessica Scarcella Spent. Senator. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to my colleagues for having this today. I stand here not as a participant in this lawsuit, but as the senator who represents this district. We have pled with the city to remove this site. We see what's happened with protest after protest, and they're not slowing down, they're growing. This is a public safety matter at this point. This is not a good area for this shelter. It's set to become a school. So I am proud to stand here today with my colleagues to come out against this site and make sure that the city hears us loud and clear and that we are united in this. We are united despite party because we need the city to work with us. We need the federal government to step up so that we aren't dealing with a national migrant crisis within the context of five boroughs. It's unacceptable and I want to thank my colleagues for taking this up today. Thank you very much, Senator. We are very grateful for your support here. Appreciate it. Uh, the Republican leader of the City Council, Joseph Councilman Joseph Burrell. Thank you. Thanks for the applause. I appreciate it. Uh, it is uh, wonderful to be here both uh, as a participant in the lawsuit uh, and as someone uh, who has a great uh, deal of respect for my neighbors on Staten Island. Uh, we need to be clear about something. There are three people that bear the brunt of responsibility for this problem. One lives at Pennsylvania Avenue down in Washington. The other lives on Eagle Street up in Albany. Uh, and the third lives in Gracie Mansion. And yet it's falling on some residents of a sleepy street on Staten Island to come up and pay that bill. And this lawsuit, we're hoping, is where the pendulum begins to swing back. Because this might be about one shelter in one neighborhood with some loud neighbors, but it really is for all of the neighbors of the 206 migrant homeless shelters that are now occupying each and every corner of this city. Those three people have stopped working for the residents of the city and have put their priorities uh, in the hands of those who have come across our border in violation of our law. If you don't believe me, listen to the mayor's own words. We are shifting resources away from public services for New Yorkers to serve this population of which I can say my constituents uh, want no part of. They don't support this idea of sanctuary city. They don't support this idea that our right to shelter provision in our Constitution extends to non-citizens. So perhaps in this courthouse, we'll see where the buck stops on the city government and the state government and the federal government. And perhaps this is where that pendulum starts to swing back uh, and give some relief to the other 206 neighbors of all the migrant shelters in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we also have representatives from Councilman David Carr's office and Congresswoman Maliotakis' office. Thank you. Uh, Assemblyman Sam Kirizola. Uh Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, representing uh, not only members of my district, but the people of Staten Island. As you've heard it said before, uh, the problem here, and I think Councilman Borelli put it best, respect for your neighbors. And respect is one thing that the city does not seem to be showing to Staten Island or to any of the other boroughs. Respect is certainly not something that the governor is showing to New York City. And respect is certainly not something that President Biden is showing to all of America with this open border policy. 
So I'm here just to, again, voice my opposition. We're very hopeful to see what happens here, and uh, the outcome of this court case will hopefully determine our steps forward in the future to push back on the rest of these migrant shelters. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Assemblyman, Assemblyman Michael Riley. Thank you, uh, Borough President Sulla. So what does this represent? This represents us trying to bring transparency to what's been done under the cover of darkness. You know, checks and balances. That's where we're at. And this is the opportunity where we can have checks and balances. Because right now, we have a city, a state, and a federal government that's running wild in our communities and taking them over. Just look at Villa. It's supposed to be a school. Construction has stopped. And now agencies are going to be asked to reduce their budgets by 5% or whatever number that may be. So that's exactly what's happening in our communities, in our schools, and all our services. They say it's not going to impact you. I just explained why it is. And this is the time where we say enough's enough. And we're calling on the court to actually do that checks and balances and render a decision that shows that our communities matter and our communities come first. Let's not put migrants coming here under the beacon of a light that says, open, we'll put you anywhere and we'll kick out our citizens because that's what happened at certain other shelters. So let's make sure that we get that transparency and we get that checks and balances. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. And uh, to paraphrase, I guess what uh, said, said, uh, Lanza said, to paraphrase an old expression, is the best way, sometimes the best way to repeal a bad law is to enforce it. <laughs> and uh, what we see here with the consent decree of right to shelter and sanctuary city, we're seeing it play out in real time. We're actually implementing it. And perhaps people, uh, people's eyes will be open to the absurdity of that uh, as it's applied and to the detriment of the citizens of both Staten Island and all of New York City. Uh, and I know we're here for St. John Villa, but there's now a discussion, uh, and I think it bears uh, repeating, that everybody here has been involved with. There's, there are those who want to get the asylum seekers uh, working permits. And why that is a bad idea, we, at least I believe, uh, is a few years ago, actually two years ago, the city council passed uh, a law to allow non-citizens the right to vote. And one of the conditions was that if you had work permits, you can vote in municipal elections. So if work permits are gr granted to the asylum seekers, they in turn will be allowed to vote in municipal elections if the appellate division reverses the trial court where we, we, we had a victory. So in all of this discussion, I am sure their hearts are in the right place. We think to give 50,000, 75,000 people who arrived here a few weeks ago uh, given the right to vote in municipal elections, even though they're non-citizens, we think is a bad idea and bad policy. Any questions? Uh, Borough President, I, I know you've had a, a couple of events with the mayor recently. Uh, we found out yesterday in the latest numbers that really the uh, migrant shelter population did stabilize at the high number of 60,000, but suffice it to say they're not really needing more shelters for the last couple of weeks. Have you asked him why don't you just back off this one? Uh, we have stated privately and publicly, that we're as transparent as possible, that we do not like this idea. We don't like it anywhere across Staten Island. We stood in Travis. All of us stood in Travis last year and said Staten Island did not cause this problem. Staten Island should not be obligated to solve this problem. So we have said repeatedly we don't want anything to do with this. Now we have a situation which is the worst of the worst in St. John's Villa. and. Uh, and that's what this case is all about. I think Senator Lanza said we all believe we have trust in our judiciary here. We have trust in the court officers and the judges. Uh, we're lucky to have them. Uh, and But what we see every day is the projections that 10,000 people are going to come every month. Where are they going to be accommodated? So we need to stop the bleeding first and solve this problem second. So we are full throttle st uh, stop this from happening. Assemblymember Tanusis, the, the borough president touched on this. You've been asking, you and your colleagues have been asking for a special session. Uh, Democrats, including the governor, seem to maybe be coming around, but at the center of that, they're talking about New York State specific work permits. 
Can you tell me what you think about that idea? I, I agree with the borough president. I think work permits that are state authorized is a very, very bad idea because of the current laws that are attempted to be pushed, that haven't already been pushed, and they're trying to be pushed at the city council level. But I want to stress one thing. They have to put pressure on President Biden to take control of the border. We are in a situation where the sink is overflowing, and instead of closing the faucet, we keep spending money buying buckets. It is going to lead to nowhere good. It needs to be taken care of. They must apply the pressure to the president, and we hope that they can do it soon enough uh, so we could finally cease from this problem. Questions? Do you have, do you have kind of a run of events of how today will go? Will we get another immediate ruling, or will it take a minute? Um, right now, as they say, it's in the Lord's hands. Um, <laughs> The, our attorneys, uh, Mark Fonte and Lou Gelamino, will argue. Uh, I'm sure the city will uh, send its best representatives to try to explain this insanity. Uh, we're hopeful the judge rules in our, be in our, um, in our favor. Uh, beyond that, we have no control. Uh, one must assume and would not be surprised if the city appeals. We would hope that if the judge finds in our favor that the city realizes that pretty much everybody's in disagreement with their position and that they do not file an appeal. That's our hope. I just want to just want to put it out there. Uh, some of us elected officials, I think most of us are, are going to stick around here while the attorneys go to the court because uh, it's scheduled for uh, 11 a.m. Uh, and then uh, so if you guys want to stick around for questions afterwards, we'll be more than happy to answer. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank